Hello, welcome to the third video on using the Max Rig to practice character animation. In this video, we'll take a look at using props with the Max Rig, bringing sound into the scene, and some animation workflow considerations. All right, if you want to use some props, like give um, the Max Rig some hair, um, you can create those those things and and link them to the head control object. Now I've created. Uh, a baseball cap and I've hidden them. I'm going to the layer manager and I'm going to um, unhide that. I also have a tongue which I'm going to include. So pretty much the procedure is to align the the prop to the uh, the head. So I will use the align tool and align the the cap to the head. I'll align it to the X and Y position. There we go. And then I'll link it to the head control. Same thing with the tongue. I'll um, I'll just link it and then I'll use the the align tool to align it. And then I'll just take a look the tongue. Just make sure it's not protruding. There we go. And then I'll select the head control, rotate it, and test and make sure that stuff moves along with the head. Now you can c include other accessories um, like earrings and maybe a nose ring. If you want you could use hair. You just gotta make a skull cap. Put the hair on the skull cap, link it to the head control. You can also um, change up the color of the body. So I'm going in the material editor. I'm going to select a sample slot. Going to name it. This is going to be the shirt. So I'll name that. It's going to have a white shirt. And um, I'll try to apply it. Um, you'll notice that the body parts are frozen, so in the layer manager you can unfreeze them. Instead of doing that though, I'm going to right click, unfreeze all. It asks me if you want to unfreeze all objects, do you want to unfreeze all layers as well. I'm going to go yes. I'm going to refreeze um, the spine and the arms and the legs and the hips and all that after I'm done. So now I can put my material on the objects that I want the material on. I'll reuse this to to make the pants. make a material for the boots or the shoes and uh, put them on the feet so there you can change it up a little bit make it a little bit better so I'll go over here and just refreeze these things here. All right. So there you have some accessories and you can change the color of the biped. Now the next thing to do is to bring sound into here. To bring sound in, go to the customize, go to the preferences and make sure under the animation tab that the Pro Sound plugin is um, active and assigned. Just go in there, just make sure, and then go OK. To bring the sound in, you go up to Graph Editors, go to New Track View, 
right click the soundtrack go to properties and add the the sound now 3d studio um, it likes wave files 16-bit waves and you should have your um, your soundtrack already mixed down so I'll bring it in um, there's some things in the pro sound dialog that you'll want to set I like turning on normalize for the playback and for the render um, the reason why I like doing that you get a good level on your audio I also like to increase the quality of the audio on both I like to turn on backward scrubbing and play once so it only plays once and it doesn't repeat and I like to turn down the scrubbing sensitivity to about one and then uh, I close that now if, if I scrub through the the time of the animation you can hear the uh, the audio track now to see the audio track inside of the inside of the track view you expand the sound expand the master waveform and click on the wave and there you'll see the waveform there it is it's longer than the duration of frames that are in my scene so I have to go to time configuration and increase the amount of frames that I'm using for my soundtrack I need 270 frames so I'll make it 270 frames long and I'll go OK I can zoom out in here there we go so I have a little bit of um, hold at the beginning and some hang time at the end now I'll close the track view and I'll bring the waveform into the time ruler down here I'll right click go to configure show soundtrack there's my soundtrack so I can see visually where the peaks and valleys are in the waveform so I can scrub through I'll just play back my audio clip here you ever wonder why farmers have stinky thumbs? Well, it's a long story. And then it'll stop there. I'll go back to the beginning. So the soundtrack is in. The next thing to do is think about workflow. Um, you have to work in passes when you're animating so you have to think about that the way I think about it is I animate the the mouth phonomies so they they match the soundtrack alright so I select all the the face control crosshairs which exposes all the keyframes that I created previously I'm gonna copy the keyframe set to where the um, the dialogue begins, the soundtrack begins. So I drag out around that key or all those keys. I'm going to shift click and drag to copy all those keys to where I want the animation to begin. And then whenever I need a keyframe, a new mouth position, With all the crosshairs selected, I copied the keyframe from the beginning to where I need it in the timeline. Then, so you ever wonder why farmers? So you, I gotta find a, a you kind of mouth. Now, it's good to go out in the internet and find a phonomi sheet that shows you mouth positions the basic ones and I have one here and I need a U mouth and there's one there 
And with this one here, I can actually see which crosshairs have been moved. And I can see their, their position. So at that point, with auto key on, I'll select the, the, cro the crosshair and move it to get the mouse shape. So I'll move various crosshairs to get the mouse shape that I need. So I'm going to refer to this Phonomi sheet here. Um, some narrowing, so I'll do that. So you, a uh, little bit of a puff in lips in. Oops. Something like that, and a little bit of a smile. I'll just refer to this again. And, oh, yeah, let's see here. So the jaw, a little bit of a smile and narrow. So something like that. And what you do is you work through every time you need a keyframe. You select all the controls, all the little crosshairs. You press and hold shift. You click and you drag. And you create a keyframe set where you need it. And you make a new mouth position depending on the... Uh, the audio, the dialogue sound. And you work through your way through creating keyframes as you go. As well, you could reuse these. You can mark the keyframe with a time tag. So go here, add a tag. That's a U. Um, uh, mouth position, so I'll name that U mouth and go OK. And every time I need a U mouth, I can go to the time tag and go to the frame, select the keyframes with the keyframe set with all the crosshairs selected. Press shift, click and drag to where I need that new U mouth position. And while you're doing this, you work your way through the soundtrack. Think about a workflow. Think about animating in passes. That is, animate the mouth, animate the tongue, animate the nose scrunching if you need to animate your eyes, animate your brows, then move on to animating your body and fleshing out the expressiveness of the animation that you're trying to create with the, um, the Max Rig.